Thanks a lot. Thank you, Johanna. And great to be here today. So, so industrial symbiosis, that's something I'm really fascinated about. And why is that? Well, I grew up on the countryside with parents who had a big farm in Sweden. They had crops, they had forests and animals. And they always wanted to think holistic, to respect the ecological matters, the societal matters, and the ethical ones. They wanted to understand more. And they had researchers who lived with us for months. We were also one of the first ones to have a big biogas plant at our farm. When I started to work, I started in the food industry. And after some years, I became environmental manager and production manager. And that was very, very good. As environmental manager, I saw what needed to be done for the environment. And as production manager, I could implement, decide, and invest. And very, very often, these came to, together. Because as environmental, actually, nerd, I wanted to be resource efficient. And I wanted to understand the holistic perspective and the whole, uh, today we call it value chain or circular economy. We also started a cooperation with a nearby farm that could use some of the rest products from the production site. And that's actually today called industrial symbiosis. At the role that I have at Ericsson as IoT, Internet of Things Sustainability Director, one of the things that I've been fortunate to work with is the integration of sustainability into business. I've been part of uh, working with projects such as connecting mangroves with IoT, where we, we did this in Malaysia and in the Philippines, and increased the survival rate of the plants with from 40% to 80%. That then, which is good for the climate, but it also had a positive effect on biodiversity, both on land and in water. Uh, Ericsson has also worked in different con contexts with uh, Professor Johan Dockström, and we have been providing input to the cor carbon law on how to half the emissions uh, every decade. That is needed according to the Paris Agreement. One of the peer-reviewed research reports that we have done show that if ICT, information and communication technology, is used with the intention to reduce the carbon emissions, actually 15% of the global emissions, that's equal like EU and US emissions together, can be reduced with ICT. Then it needs to be implemented with that purpose and that you measure it continuously. So how could one of the paths to do that be done? Well, one way is to that the physical things that we have also share data and have a digital representation. For that to happen, there needs to be a connectivity layer. And that's core for Ericsson. And we have worked for many, many de decades on standardization of these technologies of connectivity. And what we have seen now, the latest years, is new technical standards for the Internet of Things. So recently in uh, Australia, in a vast area, we show that from a base station that normally you have a coverage of 40 kilometers with your mobile phones, the thing that was connected, this was a weather station, had, could send data 98 kilometers from that station. So now we talk about this with the surface coverage. So for the things that they are now entering new technology standards where the things can communicate with each other, we can gather data. Another example is something called embedded SIM cards. So a couple of years ago, this standard was set, and these standards can then work globally. And with the eSIMs, so for example, if I would produce water pumps, I could embed this eSIM in the water pump. I don't have to download the software at the in the beginning. The, I can just have this eSIM here. And then the, the water pump is sold to someone and started to be used. Maybe here in Arjeplog. So it kind of wakes up here in Arjeplog. Where am I? Oh, I'm in Arjeplog. It's the water distribu distributor here in Arjeplog who owns me. Then they can download the software. They can set the rules, the handling of this water pump. And then the whole life cycle management can be done with the, uh, with the software in the, in the water pump. So the eSIMS is another perspective 
that you can download software and handle the rules for connected devices. So, okay, there can be a lot of data collected and a lot of data uh, needs to be handled somehow. There are also, of course, then this issue with siloed data and that data maybe uh, is protected and not shared or that you want to share it, but you don't know how. So we need to understand how we create networks of actors that dare to share data, that then can trust the data and do more of the data and information and, and collect data from maybe from drones, from robots, from satellites, other databases. And within Sweden, there is a big innovation project or program called Drive Sweden. The purpose of this is to have sustainable, safe, efficient, and attractive mobility in the whole of Sweden. And we're part of that from Ericsson. And one of the products that we have done is something called an innovation cloud. And this innovation cloud is like an enablement platform for partners to share data and to uh, investigate different types of business models, to elaborate on technology solutions, but also to jointly discuss the roadmaps for a safe and sustainable uh, mobility in Sweden. So I think that's a fantastic platform, which is just growing organically, which is another positive part. So if we have this data that we can trust, that we can make knowledge and take insights from, we can also use that for machine learning and artificial intelligence. Now, AI, that's kind of an external intelligence to the human one. And everything when we have new technologies, we need to be a bit cautious. And like if you have a young person next to you or you're in your family, you guide, you support, and, and you do the best for it to mature in a good way. It's actually similar thinking mentally we need to have with new technologies. And like AI, we need to be there, put the questions, and, and support in a good way, so it can mature in a good way for a purpose. And lastly, I just want to come back to my parents. My father is still alive, 87. He's on the internet every day. He loves the, 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 the learning and the information he can get. If he and my mother still had been running the, this farm on the, on the countryside. First of all, hashtag full coverage, that product, they wanted, would like to have the result now on the, on the farm because they wanted to understand more, gather data, know more about the soil, the, if there were any leakages from the agriculture that they were doing, and also to understand the more holistic perspective, the value chain that they were part of. They would also like to be part of a new product that has been started smart, fossil-free, sustainable agriculture. Uh, and that is also with experts in agriculture, in data, in connectivity. So for example, Telia and Ericsson is part of that. And they're going to start a reference group for farmers. And if I then had been a production manager, an environmental manager, and this production site was in the countryside, so what would I have done? One of the things is to leverage the wireless factory. I would not have invested more in, in cables. I would have gone wireless so that I could be more flexible in the factory. But I also wanted to understand that's one system, but I'm part of another system, you know, the logistics, for example, but also systems of systems that also have conflicting goals and targets. And for example, when uh, listening to the sustainable development goals and the planetary boundaries. There are conflicts that we need to address. Maybe we can use some of the artificial intelligence to help us to manage these systems of systems and the conflicts between the systems and the different targets. I would have also liked to use something called digital twins. And in digital twins, you can do something in the digital world, test it, try it, prototype, and then you decide if you want to do it in the physical. So as a production manager, I did many prototypes and then realized this didn't work. But in the digital world, I can do it there first and then decide to do it in the physical. So connectivity, 
the digital infrastructure, both from a surface coverage as well as the, the, the high speed and also low latency. So in the logistics perspective as a production manager, I would want to see electrical autonomous vehicles. And in my factory, I would also like to leverage from the next generation this 5G because it comes with extremely low latency. So I can use remote controlling in a completely different way. And then, of course, building this network of actors that I can co-work with and share data and they can share with me, we can then trust the data and the knowledge from that. And then jointly, we can have this symbiosis, the industrial symbiosis together. And I would love to be part of that journey. Thank you.